April 15th, 1987 marked the day I turned 4 years old. It was also the day I was introduced to video games. For my birthday, I received an Atari 2600 and two games, Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. If I ever have kids, which I doubt will happen, I'm introducing them to the Stone Age games so they can establish an appreciation for the pioneers before they play anything modern. Anyway, enough bullshit about me and my outlook on family values. Like I said, Pac-Man and Donkey Kong were the first two games I ever played. So why not start my Atari reviews off with them? I'm gonna do Pac-Man first, cause it was the first of the two that I played. Now if you don't already know, Pac-Man was a phenomenon. It ate up so many quarters that you could take all the metal from all of them and make a whole army of metal gears. You control a yellow ball face thing that maneuvers around a maze eating up dots. Four ghosts will chase you around the maze. Contact with any of them will cause you to perish. In the four corners of the maze are power pellets which will turn the tables and allow you to eat the ghosts for a short period of time. When you eat them, they'll turn into a set of eyes and go back to their little home in the middle until your invincibility wears off. The object is to eat all the dots in the maze, including the power pellets, and then you advance to the next one. Well, sort of. You advance to the exact same fucking maze you were just in. That's right, there's only one screen in the whole game, and the one maze they give you sucks. It's so monotonous and boring and real easy to find your way through. Pac-Man doesn't even have a sprite facing up or down, he just shifts to his side. There might be a ghost coming, but he doesn't give a shit. You'll see it out of his peripheral vision, I guess. The ghosts aren't exactly easy on the eyes with their constant flickering, and when you eat the power pellet, their color scheme causes them to almost blend in with the background. The absence of fruit that would bounce around the maze as bonus points is a glaring omission. With all the corners they cut, you'd think they'd at least be able to put the fruit in the game. One kind, at least. Man, this game has rush job written all over it. There are eight difficulty settings, which change the speed of you and all the ghosts, and are two-player alternating mode. But other than that, there's not much variety, which is where the game suffers the most. It's really not a terrible game. The controls are good and the gameplay is decent, but it does get old fast, and it's a real shitty adaptation of a colossal hit. Which is why this is such a letdown. By itself, it's a generic, average, run-of-the-mill maze game, but because this was the granddaddy of maze games, and the arcade version kicked so much ass, your expectations are very high. You don't want the home version to be a generic, garden-variety disappointment. Despite all the negative reactions this game received, it actually sold really well, mainly due to its name alone. The problem was they made so many goddamn copies that they ended up with a lot of leftover unsold inventory, which helped contribute to the game market crash of 1983. The 2600 finally got it right with Ms. Pac-Man and Junior Pac-Man sequels, but Father Pac-Man was forced to be associated with this whole hum release.